Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're going to be looking at something um, that I, I mentioned in the previous video, uh, which was sort of that mesh interaction with sort of like physics uh, collision. And uh, this is something I've been scouring the internet for a solution for for a while because no one really talks about it. Um, and most of the solutions I found are kind of just people trying to help other people. It's not really um sort of any solid information around it so i thought i'd do this tutorial in in the hopes that anyone else trying to kind of get this um sort of uh effect will obviously be able to get it hopefully um first time around without messing around too much on google so what am i talking about well if i show you this so we have our apples one of them is large and that's a, for a reason i'll show you what I mean. So this doesn't work particularly well with smaller items. Uh, and actually, if I do remember correctly, um, when I play things like Skyrim, you do get a sort of similar outcome. Uh, and that's because it's just they're just too small uh, for the collision boxes to detect properly. So you can see I can kick this uh, toolbox now. It doesn't move too fast. That's because I've made it heavier um, than other items. And if I go and kick an apple, for example, it will roll around, but it does mess with my collision box a little bit. But if I kick the bigger one, it doesn't. And that's because um, it, it's got a bigger collision box to connect against mine, whereas the smaller ones, it's like, whoa, what's happening sort of thing, you know? Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of steps we need to do, so I'm just not going to mess around too much. I'm just going to show you kind of how it works. So let's come out of that. Now, you can do this with any item. Um, there is one very small box that you need to tick to ensure this process works, but it's the other boxes and, and fields that I've tweaked to, to kind of get a, a smoother, slightly better result. So first things first, if you go to the project settings um, and you just type in sub-step, you'll get this sub-stepping um, option for the frame rate. If, tick that to true, and what that does is these smaller objects that um, it struggles to uh, find the collision for. Uh, if I tick that off and then I play, you'll notice that what happens is, is because it's got nowhere to go, uh, the game just pushes it through the floor um, and they just disappear. And you'll have a lot of issues, basically. So by clicking on sub-stepping, what that's doing is anything that's too small that the, the game can't work out the collisions well enough, to kick it about like those small apples it will instead of um just pushing out the floor and getting out of the way to to stop the issue it, it basically stops that. and that's why we get that kind of uh sort of jittering effect that's where the collisions are kind of trying to figure out what to do now you can see there that there's times where i'm kicking it and it's, it's working perfectly but the times where it can't figure it out normally it would just um sort of push it through the floor but in this instance, it's actually saying, okay, don't do that. Let's let's figure out what we need to do, kind of. And it, but that's why the jittering happens. But anything slightly bigger than that apple, it works It works really well. Um, so that's the first thing you need to do. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our master item to do this next bit. And um, what we're going to do is go down to our physics section. Now, you might not be able to set this up in the simulate physics bit because it doesn't have a static mesh assigned. But we can set that up in the individual items. But basically, you need to tick on that simulate physics to true. And I think the way I did it this time around was I just set uh, an object. Um, like, let's say if I pick the apple, for example. If I go into the apple, and I can then click on simulate physics. So that's the first thing I did. Then you want to tick on mass, and you want to give it a figure that you feel fits somewhere around where you you expect that weight to sit so as an example for the apple i've got it set to five kilograms but the toolbox is set to if i go into the box it's set to 50. um the next results i changed was the linear damping and the angular damping i set both those to one and the reason i did was because they i think they're automatically set to zero but what happens is 
Uh, if they're both set to zero, the item shoots itself up into the air and you'll just never see it again. <laughs> it's just gone, right? So it's good to set those to like one just so that they don't just shoot directly upwards. Um, after that, the only other thing I really changed was uh, generating overlap events. And I changed it to a physics actor uh, so that it can... Um, it can uh, simulate the physics. Uh, now we will go over the new physics material that I, I went through as well. That's, that's coming up, don't worry. Um, but overall, that's the main things you need to change um, within this. Uh, very, very simple stuff, but it's all little, little changes that you wouldn't necessarily think to do that make the world of difference. Um, the next thing uh, I did was, uh, I obviously created that new physics material that, that went into that slot. And you just need to right click and you can just type in physics um, like so and it comes up with a physical uh, physical material. Um, open that up and I, I didn't change too much in here. Um, I changed friction to 0 0.4. I also uh, changed restitution to 1 uh, and I changed rest restitution combine mode to average. And then I override restitution combine mode. That's the two main things I did. I also up the density to one, um, just to help uh, with some things. And then I think that was all I changed in here. The density basically, uh, it, it just calculates mass properties better. That's why I changed that, just in case anyone's wondering. Uh, and then I just assign it to uh, this part here, this physics material override. I just set that as the new physical material. You can drag and drop it from the content drawer if you don't want to uh, find it. Or you can obviously call it something better and you'll just find it better in the drop down if you, if you search for it. So once you've done that, you can go back into here. Now there's one other option I need to change. And that is the, you, you can see it here. If you type in grav or gravity, it'll come up with the override world gravity. Tick that to true and set it to minus 4,000. Now, as a rule, it's set to zero. And I'll show you what happens if you set it to zero. I don't know where my apples have gone, by the way. But if I kick it now, it floats like crazy. Look at it. It's it's, it's like we're on the moon. Now, <laughs> this is great if you want to create something like a space game. Because you can get these like awesome sort of... Uh, that's probably a bit much. But <laughs> you can get some pretty cool uh, effects from like a space game, for example, if you did that. But anyway... Uh, well, I've got it. I haven't changed it back. So 4,000 is the way to go anyway. So once you've done that, you should be in a good position to get some really, really cool results. I haven't changed anything else from the top of uh, off the top of my head. I just want to check. No, I didn't use CCB. But yeah, that's what I added anyway from those few uh, few changes. And that's how I got this result. Hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this helps you in your uh, attempt to uh, get the similar result. I know for a fact that, as I said, I had some major issues with mine. Oh, there's one other thing that I did change, actually, thinking about it now off the top of my head. If you open up your thing and go to here, find it in the content drawer. These small items, I, I put on a collision um, on them. Oh, God, that's the material, not what I wanted. I want the... Uh, oh... Sorry, I'm looking for that, aren't I? There we go. Uh, I put on a pretty standard collision, and you can just add a sphere simplified collision like that. I, I don't want to add another one. Uh, that's my collision there. And on the right-hand side under collision, uh, I set it to, pro I just left it as a project default, but I added that um, that collision in. And uh, what it's doing is helping sort of create that boundary from the player and the object. It did help a lot, but obviously you can still see I get that occasional jittering uh, from the smaller items. Which, again, I think if you think back to like Skyrim, like if I stay on it, that's what happens. I'm rolling with it, essentially. There must be a um, an option I'm, I'm missing. But as I said, this is the best result I could get doing this um, with the... With with the sort of time I spent doing it. I, I can't seem to find too many tutorials or documentation. There was a really good one, uh, a football one I found, 
that gave me a lot of very interesting ideas. It, it didn't get me the result I was looking for, but it definitely stepped me in the right direction. Um, but uh, if anyone wants that link, just let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll put the link up for you uh, to that football one because that was quite an interesting one. But uh, yes, yeah, it just allows us to move these items around and obviously giving them all different weights and stuff will be really interesting down the line when we've got weapons and stuff and we're you know, applying all this gravity to it and stuff. It's going to be hopefully quite fun. But as I said, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, this video was a little bit longer than I was hoping it to be, but um, either way, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit that uh, subscribe button if you're new here. It's free to do. You can always change your mind down the line. And for anyone who's been here before, thank you so much for all your continued support. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.